today i am telling you the love story of sodium and glucose and the name of the story is secondary active reabsorption in this story the rich sodium helps her boyfriend glucose to go inside the cells and reach his home the blood now to understand the story you need to know some of the previous episodes of this drama so basically what's going on that inside the kidneys in the process of urine formation in the process of urine formation there is filtration of blood in the nephrons inside the kidneys and blood is brought to the nephrons and it is filtered and the filtration process we have discussed in detail in our previous lectures and once the filtration has occurred the filtrate along with substances enter the proximal tubule of the nephron now from the nephron the proximal tubule of nephron some of the substances are reabsorbed into the blood that is known as tubular reabsorption and some of the substances are excreted into the urine now the tubular reabsorption process is either passive without use of energy or it is active which is with the help of energy now we have previously discussed that active reabsorption of substances from proximal tubule into the blood from proximal tubule cell these are cells of the proximal tubule and reabsorption from proximal tubule into the blood is either passive or active and active reabsorption is either primary active or secondary active now in our last lecture we discussed in detail that in active in the primary active transport in the primary active transport there is direct use of energy by breaking down atps and absorption of substances occur from tubular lumen into the cells of proximal tubule and then into the blood or intercellular spaces now the example used was that of sodium in which the energy is generated by the breaking down of atps by the sodium potassium atps that was the active transport but another active transport is the secondary active transport which basically is secondary active reabsorption now here we will take into account the love story of sodium and glucose the glucose is absorbed actively the glucose is absorbed actively see glucose is here it is trapped in the proximal tubule and it is absorbed actively from the proximal tubule into the blood it needs some power it needs some energy to be reabsorbed into the blood but it does not have its own energy or power so it will utilize the energy of sodium and that's why it is the secondary active reabsorption now glucose is like a poor boyfriend and sodium is the rich girlfriend and this sodium the sodium's father is very rich and he has a lot of power and he is basically active here and he is continuously swinging all the siblings of sodium that is sodium and potassium they they are basically playing here throwing sodium out and throwing potassium inside which give her the energy because at any turn this sodium has a chance to enter into the cell so basically the sodium potassium pump is generating energy and with the help of energy sodium is thrown out of the cell and potassium is thrown inside the cell and that is the prime source of power for the rich sodium now because the sodium here with the help of this pump is thrown out thrown out of the cells of proximal tubule so the deficiency of sodium generates inside the cell due to which the sodium in the tubular lumen has a chance to enter inside the cells with the help of the carrier proteins as the sodium tries to enter into the cells the energy used by sodium to enter inside is utilized by the glucose and other substances like amino acids to take entry into the cells into the cells of the proximal tubules now the absorption of glucose and amino acids with the help of energy generated by a movement of sodium is the secondary active reabsorption why we call it secondary because why we call it active and why we call it secondary active it is active because the reabsorption of glucose <clears throat> from the proximal tubule the reabsorption of glucose and the reabsorption of amino acids from the proximal tubule into the blood is up, is basically needing some energy so it is an active process the reabsorption is active but the energy is not in itself generated by the glucose or amino acids rather this energy is basically the utilization of energy due to the movement of sodium so that's why it this energy comes secondarily uh, or it is due, due to this energy is basically secondary to the movement of sodium which primarily which primarily is due to the sodium potassium pump so that's why it is a secondary active reabsorption process now that's the whole love story you may love it or not but this is the story in which 
the glucose and amino acids they get reabsorbed from the proximal tubule into the cells of the uh, proximal tubule from the lumen of the proximal tubule with the help of carrier proteins into the cells of the proximal tubule due to the power generated by the sodium potassium pump and the power generated by sodium potassium pump basically throws out sodium out of the cells so deficiency of sodium is generated in the cells to fill the deficiency sodium from the tubular lumen enters into the cells and this movement of sodium along the carrier proteins into the cells generates some energy and that energy is utilized by glucose and amino acids to basically move along with the sodium inside the cells and this movement of glucose and amino acids from the tubular lumen into the proximal tubule and then into the intercellular spaces and uh, then finally into the blood is the secondary active reabsorption of sodium and sorry of glucose and amino acids and that is the end of this love story thanks a lot for watching the video